29th day of July, 2024, allegedly, according to that thing we call a calendar. This is the show you were looking for. How do I know that? Because you found it. Anyway, the Ocelli Effect. And, yeah, we're live on a Monday, moon day, whatever it might be. And uh, an unusual guest, for sure. Now, why is he an unusual guest? Because he's an unusual guy. Uh, you know, I had a discussion about him uh, a, a few months back with somebody and for some reason they were scared to death that I actually talked to this guy. I love him. <laughs> I haven't talked to him on air in years and uh, and, and I, I the conversations uh, still are banging around in my head and making all kinds of noise because, well, that's what he does. How do I describe Dr. Richard Allen Miller? Um, I, I, you defy description, uh, uh, Doc Ram. <laughs> what? How do I explain this? I mean, I, I, I got to begin the conversation with. Well, you know, I saw this movie not too long ago called Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. And I thought to myself, what a surprise that they actually made this movie. Um, I didn't think they would go that far on a uh, silver screen, but. Maybe you have some thoughts about that. Uh, RichardAllenMiller.com, I'll give you guys links. I'll show you some books and things that he's written, but there, there, there's just too much to even... I, I could spend a half hour listing everything, okay? From magic mushrooms to uh, altered states uh, onto the uh, power tools for the mind. I mean, please, it, it's on and on and on. But anyway, how are you doing tonight, Doc Ram? I'm going into leprosy. Oh, schizophrenic leprosy. Just kidding. I'm good. Uh, other than this has been a very weird day, biorhythm-wise. Biorhythms, you've got your emotional, physical, and my own intellectual cycles all going in opposite directions with each other. Uh, you think, you think the way you would this is, what the hell is that? Dying, what is that? Does, <laughs> does it have anything to do with talking to me? I don't know. Do I, do I throw you off no, a I, little? <laughs> yeah. George was on my mind, but not that kind. Well, look, look, you're you're anyway, more you're more good. visual, and I'm more uh, 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 sonic in my nature, right? So let's yeah, we'll, uh, let's see where we'll, we can go with this. Okay, what what is happening? I started looking at a piece that you sent me, and uh, the, the this cloud formation around Saturn. I mean, I, look, people talk about Saturn, and they talk about the esoteric, you know, and they talk about the the hidden, you know, the occult, uh, this and that. And I got to tell you. Years. Yeah, I know. Saturn return. Um, I'm a physicist that worked uh, Navy intelligence, and now they've redeployed me. Uh, I'm training uh, some astronauts for the Saturn One project. Now, back a long time ago, far away universe, I actually, uh, working when I was out of the Pentagon, I worked, uh, I took 12 NASA scientists to Mars in 1983 by creating a wormhole. It's different than uh, astral projection and remote viewing. It's not has nothing to do with astral bodies. Uh, it has to, the term best used for it conceptually would be bilocation, and you're connecting with another part of you that didn't listen to this radio station tonight, and they all happen. That's your movie you were referencing. Right. See, bi bilocation sounds like two, but it's a whole lot more than two, and I'm well aware of that reality. However, uh, it's difficult to articulate to some people the, the, the concept of, look, there, there's the many worlds idea, right? And, and people discuss that, and they used to talk about string theory, but, I mean, strings, uh, you can't deal with one string at a yeah, time. Yeah, let's start with basic. String theory suggests that there are ten dimensions, not four that we currently enjoy. Mm -hmm. And super string then is when you take an eleventh string and you interconnect it as a wormhole with the other ten. Now with that said, then not theory is me being a little boy scout tying them into knots. I'm a polymath. That's what I've been doing since I went to NASA. I was almost sixteen years old. And uh, old man DuPont had May and two other people you're probably familiar with. Michael James for Conosuccio is in federal prison right now and Captain Crunch. And what we did basically is convert uh, Greek mathematics into English code. Hmm. 
And uh, one of the things I'm framing for with the North, which is object oriented. Right. Now, but see, uh, now left. the right. by, the by location, right. yeah. but by location again. All right. Now, by location, when you're dealing with the knots and you can actually intertwine the 10 with the knots, this, this is what I'm visualizing. Uh, but it's still, it's past that because there is this. Tying a hang with the knot. Yeah. You've got to have 11 I mean, 13 turns to make sure the next one's. How's that for a metaphor? And uh, David Kaufman uh, has developed some mathematics in that direction. I'm going to use a virtual form of this math. I'm beyond anything you could imagine in terms of. Uh, I have scars on my face. Right. <laughs> Just right. kidding. Uh, basically, I don't know how I do it. Math just tumbles out of me. It's, it's, when I look at something, I see it in articulate forms of geometry. They're like a child does. They're called a dedit. E I D I T D E. It's a dedit. It's an imaging where, okay, check A. In my previous book to the Diamond Body, it's called The Non Local Mind in a Holographic Universe. I am the original architect of that concept after more. One month earlier, went to Stockholm on developing a, a, a hologram using coherent light. Now, what I did is I extended it into mathematics, and that led to the holographic universe. And in 1973, I published an application of that uh, and went to Prague. Uh, you know, that was when it was still the Iron Curtain. And I presented a paper at Ken Gordon and Breach, and they crashed like top secret. And when I say that, it was like 10 days later, they came in, military came in, went through all my files and took everything. And I rewrote that and republished it in 1993, Psychedelic Monographs and Essays with Tom Lytle. And then uh, two Russian scientists, Gary Ayev and Popov, then quoted from that article uh, and went to Nobel. And then Max from Pell. Current Russian was studying under Gary Ayev, now working on DNA resonance. Um, it, it came up to interview me, a biologist, couldn't understand the math, and now we're co-authoring paper. I'm getting like maybe you know, 10 reads a day just on academia. Almost a year now. Hmm. I mean, people have thousands. And, and mostly, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm 80 years old. All I want to do is do my bucket list. I don't care about. I'm pro, you know. I'm being kept on a short leash. It's the correct way to put that, because I'm I'm still a serious asset. I even have a handle from Putin. Believe it or not, no, he's I... actually not as bad as everybody makes him out. He's basically a nationalist, uh -huh. and what they get is Ukraine is the source. So what would the United States do? If someone took back Kansas, Toto. Well, look, <laughs> I, I, yeah, look, this is way beyond politics anyway. So uh, the thing is, though, uh, when you talk about 1983 and going to Mars, I mean, that that that's supposed to be the thing of the future. Nobody's supposed uh, yeah, to have gone there I, yet. I, yeah, go ahead. That's what, I, that's what I do. That's what I've been doing since I was a little kid. I'm about 20 years ahead of everything. And right now, uh, when they did the uh, flyby on NASA, Saturn, you noticed, hey, that's Dr. Miller's uh, geometry. Let's go to Mars. <laughs> okay, what that means, literally, that's in the diamond body now, this new book I got about. The diamond body is basically when I moved the manager foundation from Topeka, Kansas, uh, to the University of Washington and added video feedback. That was the birth cymatics. 1979, I bypassed the use of drugs using electric currents on the forehead and was able to break a code and release neurotransmitters using electric currents in 1979. The drug that doesn't get you high, uh, what it, it, it has a chemistry very similar to but different in your neurotransmitters, and your body goes into red alert when you eat a mushroom or whatever you're doing mm -hmm. and then produces, overproduces that neurotransmitter which is what gets you hot. 
Now, right. I just gave eight altered states to the SEAL program, turned them into supermen. Imagine what could happen. You could have 400 altered states of consciousness, and you use them as tools in a toolbox rather than getting high and alone and escape recreation. Right. Now, we talked about that before, about slowing down time and all that. But what is a solid state Mandela or a Mandela? Excuse me. Mandela, you mean? That's Eric Weller's work. You mean originally at Evergreen? Well, I'm looking at an excerpt from uh, The Diamond Body, actually. And, and I was just curious if you could explain what a solid state it's Mandela solid. is. When you take cymatics and visualize them in your mind's eye, you can relate specific neurotransmitters and use them as tools. I watched a woman rip a car door to save her daughter in a flaming automobile. We actually filmed it. Now that's physically impossible. The villain did not make her bone and muscle stronger than steel. How did she do that? Right, because the skin should tear, the skin should tear, the bone should give. It is just physiologically, it should be resistant against uh, metal. Right. Yeah, yeah, but yes, yeah, she did it. Why? Because when you're in an altered state, the laws of physics are different. If you know how to use that, have a way to become Superman. You can be anything you want. That your mind's eye envisions God as is what you can become. And here's the bad news: that's even less than halfway to God, which is not knowable. You can experience God. You can't know Him. I. I was, I'm the last remaining scientist alive that worked MJ-12, Project Majestic. And I now believe Krill, the alien that disappeared recently, closing down from like, I, I, you know, I know I don't know. I'm real good at what I do. and know now that's why God gave you two brains. That's chapter seven in my book, The Nominal Mind. That's called Time Travel. And the true nature of cavitation. Now, I am knowing that chapter 8 is mind's eye, or imagination is reality, because you are only a limited part of yourself. When I studied with James Hillman and Elizabeth Kubler-Ross to soften my physics, I have a doctorate in Jungian psychotherapy, third generation imaginal psychology, I'm writing in that field also. And I can tell you what I do know. Uh, archetypes are from the Greek mythology. It started 11,300 years ago. Nothing has been captured in Britain. Every 12,000 years, the Petri dish is recycled. And that is about to happen right now. I've written on that since 1974 for the military. And you'll, you'll know it when all the volcanoes start going off, like Yellowstone and Mount Rainier, whatever. They're all, it's about to happen. When? Well, the study I did went back five epochs, at five times 12,000 years, and it had a three sigma agricultural small. That means there's a 99.9975% probability of it occurring. Now, with that said, the little one, 12,000 years ago, or 20. So, you know, who, when is it going to happen? I have no clue. I think we're due. Right now, all the planets, except Mercury and Earth, have started spinning their center, of course, spinning the asteroid, including the sun. That means mm. it's about to happen. And uh, that's why I'm a survivalist. I'm a prepper. You're a pepper. I'm a doctor pepper. <laughs> gotcha. Dr. Pepper. I forget how that. Works. Well, would, wouldn't, uh, you, I, wouldn't you like to be a pepper too? <laughs> That's it. Um, anyway, yeah, I think I'll just yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, hey, what the hell? Is, what is it? I've got scars on my knuckles from dragging. That's what I got, and I, I, uh, and I know that that's what we are. We're sugar ants. Guys, kitchen. Guys, serve soul, and the fact that. Saturn has that geometry on it to just the solar system to life form. And where that wormhole goes, I have no clue. And if you don't think NASA does something wrong, because at the end of days, 
tired of some of us escaped the Petri dish. Mm. Oh, oh, I can tell you what, one of the things that Krill told me, if you were to uh, choose an artifact to remember Earth by, what would it be? And chose the right one, choose the star of your choice to complete your evolution. Um, all our aliens that have morphed from little green men are all biped. It's this. That means they're humans. And I've seen aluminum based life forms in the laboratory. That will creep you out. And I can tell you, it doesn't have two arms, two legs, and uh, walks, talks, and, you know, it isn't like that. Mm. And so anything that does that is obviously something from the future. Now, how can I say that? Well, time isn't real any more than space is. It's a construct. Let me give you another one that I haven't talked to you about. And I, in 1974, I flew over the Oregon Vortex, BBY, an old military seaplane, and I had an interferometer, 15,000 feet. Now, what then is the latest? 15,000 feet. Hmm. That's a mini black hole. And I'm guessing all your ley lines in the Bermuda Triangle are also mini black holes. Uh, in a specific geometry into the other of <laughs> I have no idea. It's okay. Just, it's okay. I do. Okay. Um, it, you know, are, are we are we merely connected to all of this due to the the uh, the common element of water? Because that that is the thing that has always confused me uh, regarding that's this. Six structured water. Jerry Pollock was my lead when I worked. In anesthesiology, the University of Washington, when I did these studies in 1972, <laughs> they gave me tenure. Wait till you guess what I did there. But but here's the bad news. Structure, you know, water has many, many, many forms. And this structured water on Mars different than structured water on Earth. Mm. And structured water on Earth is what causes that water when it touches something, it changes. And that's a memory water. That's what they call memory. And in Chapter 7, Time Travel and the True Nature of Cavitation, I cover what happens the moment of death. And that's interesting because there's a 5-gram weight loss in man, and it's not urine. What is it? And I propose that it's a microtubule just slightly outside the physical. With five grams of structured water, it goes back home. And page two on that is uh, uh, five grams. Structured water is enough to hold memory 100,000 lifetimes. Right. We haven't that's, the, that's, the literal, that's the literal breath leaving the vessel at that five grams. That's because if you uh, don't understand the, the spirit. Is, it's just not, it's an imagination um, that, you know, in Jungian psychotherapy, they talk about the collective unconscious, and uh, we talk in terms of the other nine tenses of, of the not I part of self. It is nine tenses, it's probably nine billion times, ten, times one. That's how limited our awareness is comparison to where we're going. And I know I don't know, mm-hmm. but uh, Lord, I'm still hungry. Can I have some more, please? <laughs> no, I totally understand. Look, I repaired myself with psilocybin. I started to tell you this off air, actually. I repaired myself with uh, uh, fairly large doses of psilocybin that uh, some people said I was kind of insane to take. Uh, and I've never just. Yes, but that's okay. It's not psilocybin that actually does the deed, it's a neurotransmitter. And the transmitters that psilocybin releases are close. Hmm. No cigar. And what you really wanted to do. And that's the second part of three parts uh, doing the blue sky or that Russian dance. <laughs> well, this this allowed me to break right. every to break everything loose and reorganize. Is what it did. That's correct. Or, or change. Yes. 
So I was able to do that. And when I did that, it, it was it was odd because I had done it when I was younger and, uh, you know, not until I got to be around 50 years of age did it actually do the right thing for me. Uh, so th- there's something to this. You, you, you know, you're talking about being 80. I will probably not see that age. I'm, I'm aware of that. And that's fine. At least not in this self will I see that age. And that's fine. Some of my other selves might. Uh, but uh, and, and, and I'm to, it to connect up yourself because Lucy does it with all the different ones and becomes God. There you go. But I'm no matter not, where you went. I, I I'm not God, at least not in a major way. So uh, so th- that's the way I understand it. I mean, I may be some small memory there in the book, but I'm not the large thing and i'm definitely not doing the kind of math you're doing although i do understand the mathematics well, the of sound. Math is just one way of doing it all roads lead to rome see that's the deal mm-hmm. all roads lead to rome and each of us is uniquely different the reason to go to religion is to seek individuals fellowship uh, that have us have values you aspire toward and that's why I go to all the different religions, because my parents, mom worked into a China theater during the 40s, and she stuck me in um, Buddhist missionary schools. She couldn't be there. And uh, hmm. I, I was raised in Southern Shaolin. And then was, uh, my parents then, when I was in high school, sent me to Missouri City Catechism to armor me, because they were atheists that armor me against the missionary crap that goes on in our high schools. And when I came out of graduate school, I knew there's something else going on. And what I did is I learned old Hebrew and Greek. I did it by the numbers. And I studied six years with Gershom Sholem and did my own translations. And newsflash, I still don't know what's going on because I wasn't literally there. I see, but you were you were literally uh, there there with with Bruce Lee at one point, which uh, which I found fascinating too. Uh, but let's put that aside because I don't want to talk about the physical manifestations. That's something we could easily cover if we want to talk about the Superman idea regarding the seals and their altered states. Although that's fascinating enough because that allowed my first uh, introductions really into the concept of time shifting. I had never thought of well, it that way. Time shifting is our you know, like space. It, we started with astrology, then it, it morphed into astronomy, and in the 70s, only the rest of the universe hasn't caught up yet, it was changed into what is called cosmobiology, and that is the geometric relationship celestial bodies. And I can tell you, okay, a different concept altogether. When a woman is born, an engram is set in on her DNA on when she ovulates. And because it's the phases of the moon, she moves, that phase angle changes, and her ovulation cycle changes. And now we have birth control. Right. So that was done its work out of Yugoslavia. One of the things I learned when I was back, studied, excuse me, there's a distinction between learning something and studying it. Studying it is when you, like Tai Chi, everybody does it differently. Hmm. Right. Come close when you hit na 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 a chubby chase chip with his cue ball. Na 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 <laughs> All right. Well, look, you know, I, I also take note because you just brought up the ovum. I was looking at this uh, very interesting pattern in the hexagon of Saturn. And I That's thought to myself, cool. that looks quite a bit like an ovum, actually, doesn't it? If you do this in a movie, I'll send you a thing you can post for your guess if they'd like if you look at that too long, you're going to get in trouble. You need to train your mind before you start playing these games. It took me years as a satsangi. I was initiated by Sharon Sang. Right. I meditate every day. I take a tenth of my life, two hours, training my mind. And I still, <laughs> just normal. <laughs> you know, upper, no, upper, upper normal or paranormal or someone, a paranormal or pericomatitis there. I'll be that guy. Uh, I, um, I don't know how to, well, I did 12 NASA science when we went to Mars. Saturn is, uh, you said every 50, you know, when you're 50 something, that's your second Saturn return, by the way, 52. Mm -hmm. So it starts between at 48, uh, I mean at 28, 27, 
So 28, eight and a half. Usually right in there in your natal position, Saturn returns. That's the geometry part. Again, coming back in our terms of space. And I think that time, according to Robert Ernstein and later earlier, Stan Augustine is the duration of time sweet memory. It's organized in your brain. It has nothing to do with reality. You can change your perception of time with just breath control. That's simple. I do that when I go to the Y every day swimming. Right. Way back, I go into an altered state where everything slows down. I'm in the Y now for 10 hours a day, and it's only been half an hour. Put no, my laps in hot tub. Yeah. Yeah, no, you can stretch things that way. I, I, I'm able to do that now as well, and I do, really, I don't know okay. how, how that happens. You start practicing on all of that and fine-tuning it. Now, what's what happens? I, you know, just doing that alone took the uh, Navy field martial arts for paranormal level. Right. No, and or it does. Have the, it, just double doing a double yon style or something. And, and, and I can tell you, uh, I'm absorbing more and more <clears throat> and <clears throat> probably cool they wanted me to go to Saturn if I had done that I took not to um, if I had done that <clears throat> I'd probably come back and meet your great granddaughter <clears throat> time travel because in fact when you travel in space at those speeds time slows down and I come back to earth things have changed differently time like space again well, is, isn't that the whole isn't that the whole problem actually with traveling above what they call the speed of light is that you actually begin to move backwards in time and yeah. you special, return special theory of relativity. Yeah, correct. Einstein. Yeah. Because of that yeah, because of the theory of relativity, what happens is, is you wind up moving backwards in time instead of forwards and you actually return before you uh you, you arrive before you uh left in the first place oh, if you go backwards. Was, uh, that was in board of the rings with dildo back and saying, just before you pass out, a giant six-foot waffle iron giggles at you that if you're digging it now, we will rush it. <laughs> All right. That's hey. what I have photographed. Yeah. I understand. But this is why I was you asking. I want to You know, it's a, it's a board, board of the rings, yeah. Excellent. Well, yeah, speaking of the Lord of the Rings, uh, a lot of people have said that, you know, there are many cults of Saturn and this and that. And, and quite honestly, I've always had trouble seeing the corollary, except they use the symbolism. But it's a misunderstanding. Uh, you know, these rings are rather interesting, for sure, but they, they ignore the planet itself, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, the, you know, there's, they're now saying, uh, uh, well, I saw the evidence of life on Mars. I actually saw that. I think Mars was cultivated by an entity closely by that was uh, did not have five, uh, four fingers and a thumb. It had three digits. Um, you know, picking up something like that, and uh, something happened. That culture was destroyed, and uh, what remained was their artificial intelligence. And there's a couple of famous psychics out there that are saying that something just turned the AI off on Mars. Because if, if we had a catastrophe here on Earth, what would remain? Mm. Just what is in the ether would remain. Yeah, intelligence, yeah they're self-organizing. And worse, they're not human, which means uh, that's why as it has them off. Very famous book at iRobot said there needs to be rules of engagement. We're already having trouble with AI just in copyright laws. And uh, there, there's no accountability. Microsoft is trying to do it differently with this so-called bullshit with the cloud. But it's all takeover ownership of your body, your thoughts, and everything else. And I, I'm watching it. Right. Observing it, and I don't know what to do about it. Well, I'm, is I'm, you know, I'm not political. I'm a political analyst. <laughs> is is the destruction of humanity though inevitable with AI being introduced here? I mean, I know it's on a very simplistic level. It's uh, it's next to nothing. Uh, about as much as there's a hydrogen bomb. Yeah. Okay. So it's that kind of danger. Uh, it, it, it could be, but here's the thing: a hydrogen bomb doesn't do anything unless we make it do it. Yeah. You're going to use it. Right. And, and that they don't have that yet. 
Right. It, it's not autonomous completely. That's the thing. Once it is, what does that mean, though? I don't know. <laughs> okay. I can guess, but I don't know. No, I don't know. I, I, I really, I don't. I, I, I'm good and can project, but that's just this one part of me. There's a whole bunch of other parts of me. I can't imagine what it would be like. You got them all mixed together. Probably wouldn't enjoy me with dinner. <laughs> Well, that's that's the thing. That's why we started with everything everywhere all at once. And, you know, what about the idea of uh, and I've tried to explain this, that, you know, when they talk about reincarnation and things like this, it's like, no, you could already have been reincarnated. You could run into a child that's seven years old that was reincarnated from you that's been walking around for seven years on this timeline. And yes, that is still you. And people don't understand that because they don't understand the... Well, that's because they're not using their belief system as a tool. Now, magic with a say is hair in your yeah. pocket, sleight of hand. And magic with a K, you know, the do it up, thou wilt shall be. That is sleight of mind, where you use your mind as a tool, not an absolute. Right. That's the whole purpose of why these so-called secret societies have been doing forms of ma what you call magic with a K, like Golden Dawn, Crowley, whatever, that that I am basically the physicist that has not blown himself up yet. <laughs> well, good thing. <laughs> Walk gently, grasshopper. Yes, sir. <laughs> and, hey, look, good thing because uh, I'm I'm continuing to learn from you uh, over and over again, and I've been learning from you even when I wasn't speaking to you. So, uh, here, here we go. When when you want to talk about this, how do you begin to break that linear thought process? Because th th this is something that I I can't even begin to introduce to others. All I know it's in history. All of your saints in history, stressed, importance, meditation, training your mind. It goes back centuries. Take one tenth of your life, just train your mind. Go silent, and listen to yourself, and see where that takes you. And even I started in 1979, and I, I, it's, I still, it's a process. Never get there. Mm. Process. Well, I, I have a friend that tells me the beginning of the Training process. Your mind. Yeah, I have a I have a friend that tells me the beginning of the process is to remove the false voice, which is there to begin with. We all begin with a false voice, which is actually not our own. Then oh, once. Well, here, well, what do you mean not your fault? Hey kids, what time is it? Honk honk honk. Yeah. <laughs> That's how old I am. How do you do? <laughs> now. Yeah. You can start talking about television and radio, and. Of media and billboards, parents, church, all the rest of it. You have been sensed. Right. Came into this creepy place. <laughs> I have been programmed. And uh, how you choose is what made you God's favor. And what I've done is I've chosen to try to train a part of myself to take semi-responsibility in thoughts and actions. I haven't gotten there. Hmm. I don't think I can process where you never really get to the finish line. Well, it is a process, but uh, continuously what your goal is to leave things in a better condition than the way you found them. That's your intent. That's your intent. That's the way you do something. Why you chose to be here is your purpose. Purpose and intent. Now, I have a little sign in front of my toilet that <laughs> constantly talks about unrewarded genius and the importance of persistence. <laughs> That's sort of like uh, punching psyche into matter. Punching psyche into matter, okay. That's what makes something physical. Hmm. So I, it's a physical universe. Then do it, do it again. Training for my kids. It's a process. And uh, I'm only for playing. I have met playing and uh, and uh, they just, I smoke pot with 
Pure Valiant Khan and Yogi Bhajan. <laughs> That's old I am. And, but I smoke pot with him here. I've had an Indian chief up in Chickaloon. Owns a pipeline up there. Nick Beggett brought me up to Handed me a joint rather than shaved my hand. That's how they do it up there. Now, uh, uh, you know, <clears throat> everybody's different. And I think there are as many religions as there are human beings. But all are lead to God. And um, whatever. Uh, but I can tell you that um, you would seek out a church or a group fellowship because they have values you aspire toward. Each of us is unique. And that's one of the reasons why I go to all the different churches here in my town. Each week I go to a different church. I want to see what, what they're preaching. I want to see how I feel about the people that are there. Yeah. What am I learning? What am I studying? I'm trying to find myself. Mm. Oh, and then there's also the experience of the collective intent, which is why prayer actually does have an effect. And it's uh, past the observer effect. That's another book I'm writing. I'm writing the Marshall Papers on the genius that Buck hired. Bob Marshall called the Marshall Papers will be the title of that. He... I came up with the design on the Bucky Bowl and structured water concepts. He, um, nobody could understand him. He was an idiot Tom out of Fort Bragg. And I, I was brought in to uh, try to translate for him. I had some difficulty, but it led to Nunaranabi and a whole bunch of open doors now for me that are rich and fertile. Mm. I have, uh, speaking of that, I have a nine volume encyclopedia on the turn of agriculture. That's my real, it's country living and working with soil. I, I love that as part of my thing that I do. So I write in a number of fields, including training the mind. I right. work on magic. My new tarot book is coming out called The Magical and Ritual Use of Metaphor, Typical Guides in Daily Living. I am proposing <clears throat> that there are <clears throat> 22 stories in the big city. Persephone having to go to hell each year would be a kid <clears throat> taking drugs once a year because he's depressed for Christmas. Mm-hmm. Each storyboard has an ending. You don't like the ending. Yeah. That's the purpose of ritual to change that movie. Well, the ending is always selective because you, 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 at all times you can alter it along the way. And uh, uh, the Tano put it to Lone Ranger. What do you mean, a wee white man? Remind, <laughs> reminds me of an old writing you did on the uh, ma- magical use of mushrooms and things like that, uh, which was a very yeah. old piece. Uh, but, but that was written in the seventies, right? Well, I I wrote the early books on psychedelic mushrooms for high time, and. Uh, <clears throat> then I got into pharmaceutical machines where I was marketing gourmet into Canada. Right. And Chandra was <clears> at <throat> 100,000 pounds a month. And then I got into pharmaceutical mushrooms, which are extremely interesting. They have polysaccharides, these are oxygen molecules, I like them. big super stuff, like maybe 100 oxygen molecules. And you Throw that through a jet engine mm-hmm. at Mach 4. <clears throat> and it breaks down <clears throat> the mushroom into 400 nanometers. Not 80 mesh for capsule. It's not easy going to go. What happens is you put that on the tooth. And it goes right straight down through the cell wall <clears throat> and turns on ACP, oxygen. That's a little quark gluon plasma. <clears throat> That's uh, your immune system, and uh, you get that oxygen turning that little quark gluon plasma on in a cell. And watch what happens next. Rather than having to take an antibiotic that goes through the gut, you only get 28 <clears> percent. <throat> Imagine getting 100 percent on location, and uh, you have to go through everything, all the different things, including blood to get to the source. Put it out. Abscess tooth, two hours, the abscess is gone. Mm. Whereas it took three days. Industry. That's why I'm saying medicine, pharmacy, 
and demonstrate it. They're all broken. In the state of Oregon, I have kidney stones. I'm an immense fan. And uh, if I were under 65, I would have been within two days in an outpatient situation with sonic blasting mm. where they blow that big hunk out into small pieces so I'm not in such pain. Oh, but because I'm in over 80, yeah, uh, that, that it, it's one month out, uh, but we can give you some oxycotton to help you with the pain if you want. I told him to go to hell. And I, I, I mean that seriously. I don't know what's happening in other states, but I can tell you the pharmacy and, and medicine, and it's, they're all broken, in my humble opinion, the way I see things. And I'm disappointed and uh, because I have Harvard Medical, and I did my intern at UW, but in anesthesiology. But I'm not just an anesthesiologist. I got my tenure as a physicist. Yeah. And I can tell you, I don't know, but I'm disappointed in what I see happening. And I don't know why it's happening. It doesn't make any sense. Like Canada, how does Trudeau get away with that? How come they didn't lynch him? I don't know. Mm. But there he is. And Putin. Putin is not a bad person. He was KGB. Yes, he's a criminal. But, but he's, he's a nationalist. He's trying to better his own country. He's not trying to expand it. And Ukraine is where he gets his food. And uh, what would you do if they took Kansas away from us? Mm. Turning. Yeah. And uh, in a way, why? Well, war is good for business. That's me. That's just my opinion. That does not mean I'm right. But I'm very disappointed in our leadership, Republican and Democrat. I remember the look on my father's face. He's dead now. I remember the look on his face when he realized it's no longer a Republican. <laughs> Let's go with my dad. He's disappointed in the Republican. Uh, it's all facade. Mm. And how dare them? Well, it's all a complete facade at this point. They're just, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, serving their corporate masters who pay them, and that's it. They're not there representing, well, you know, the sets of values, money, please. Money changes everything. No, it's more like, uh, what's your face? I'm a materialistic girl. <laughs> oh, yeah, and then, Madonna. And then, and then, and then, yeah, Madonna. I guess it for me. <laughs> But that's but that's what it's all down to now is is, you know, who who is paying and they're well, look, it's a service. I get it. But it's no longer a public service. And, well, uh, yes. Nate, for example, is responsible for the MRNA leaking out into everything. How come he's so rich rather than being he's a criminal? Of course. And in fact, here's the other part. I grew up in Washington and in Arlington. Uh, which is where Microsoft used to hunt rabbits. I watched that whole thing change. And just the corporate in downtown Seattle, or Amazon, in Amazon, Amazon's another one. I think they call themselves Amazon. I'm a, uh, what do you call it? David, they couldn't pick up big enough rock to drop them. But they are publishing stuff without my permission. And I can only guess what they're doing to other people. And I, you know, right Straight above where the corporate is up on the 12th floor there in Seattle, the 11th floor, it's a black ops group out of Arlington. It's there for hire. You can hire somebody to mess with you, to mess with somebody with just for money yeah. out of Amazon. Now, mm. I dare them to take me to court on libel on that. No, so, no. you know, there's, I, I dare him. I would love to go into court. I had a pro bono lawyer who was all set to go shoot him down. When he came back to me, and said, Rick, I can't, I can't take these people to court because I've been in court three years and only make $60,000 $60, a year if I took all the money. I See, I could prove literally mm-hmm. they've taken over $180,000 worth of my money just in illegal sales. Diamond body, not diamond body, but like modern alchemists and some of these others. And right. I'm, I'm watching how the whole thing plays and all the different things that we're involved with, including food. How come it's failing? Uh, oh, well, let's take a look at Idaho. Uh, okay, Idaho has a half a million acres right now near Boise. None of them have panhandle down in the primary. Right. Half a million acres. They cut the water off. 
because they were afraid it wasn't going to last. And they took control of well water. Of course, there's river water. If you're living on the river, supposedly you have Rampirian raw water right there. I just took that over as well. Oregon, what they're doing now, the children in our grade schools is abominable. Right. I have two books coming out on children I did with uh, Dr. Norm Shaley, who's died, who just died a couple days ago. And it's called Children Ask the Darndest Questions. The children were allowed to, sixth graders were allowed to come on national TV radio, ask questions they couldn't find answers for in the libraries or parents or whatever. A typical question. If parents, if, uh, if pigs are so smart, how come parents can talk and pigs can't? <laughs> hmm. Well, uh, our, that's probably our single most important natural resource. Of course. Our children. I mean, get a group. What are, what are we doing? Uh, you know, with our education? I can't believe it. It's May, and it's on uh, all fronts. Right, right. Uh, well, I don't have that. You know, you mentioned the mRNA stuff, uh, and I wasn't going to ask you about it, but since you brought it up, I will. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on that, that alteration of, you know, the, the, the they're screwing around with DNA at the same time where they're introducing AI, and it's it just sounds like a bad cocktail to me. Uh, throwing them inside your body with the mRNA, oh, yeah, we don't need a chip implant. We already got it in there. Yeah, of course. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, that was the point I tried to make when people said they're trying to chip you. I said, no, it's already there. You, you've already consumed it because you've been consuming these nanoparticles all this time anyway. And, uh, you know, now this is a new one, and I didn't know if it was something worse, uh, you know, because it's a little bit difficult. It, 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 none of their science makes sense to me. Of course they don't, because they don't make sense. Fair enough. Well, anyway, let's uh, let's get get back to one other thing here. Uh, where would you like people to go to be able to pick up your work, though? Should they go to? Uh, uh, well, that's my only source of income. My book, my website, Richard right. Allen Miller dot com. Right. A L A N. Richard Allen Miller dot com. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dot com. Yeah, and I have uh, uh, a lot of things I'm going to be doing. Take a look. I've got a bunch of new stuff up there. I taught eleven years at Harvard. And giving away manuscripts, rare manuscripts in those audiobooks, so that you can see the sources when I was teaching it. That was basically when Mark Hume hired me to change BC Lint into AOL. And let me tell you now how social networking, I have, I do not participate in it because of what, what happened to me on Facebook. They put me in jail for 12 hours. I, created an argument that was quite valid. They admitted they were wrong. When they reinstated me, they lost 12 years of daily postings. And that's when I said, I don't need this. And I don't need this. I'll do it myself. And the people that are meant to know and hear what I have to say will find me. And that, that's all it's about. I can say that uh, all your social, even academia, EDU, where I publish papers, I still don't join it. Mm. I won't. I won't. Yeah. That's me. That doesn't mean I'm right. I just, I'm wondering why this is happening. And, uh, well, let's see. Uh, the world's about to end. <laughs> They're going to rotate the petri dish. How do I get out of jail? Because here I am. If you want to jail, ain't mm. got no money. Take my beer. That's Kingston Trio. And I know that I don't know. But I can guess. But I guess it's kind of creepy. Yeah, well, it's a strange thing. I think it's it's all meant to compartmentalize us and to make sure that we are well disconnected. Because eventually, uh, if you pull the plug on all of this and people are so dependent on it, that'll be the end, right? And you'll have people just wandering around completely disconnected with no... Yeah. I'm going to leave you with one last thing that's really important to sure, you. Sure. There's a new movie out. It's a theater. It's not on that, but uh, Fiora or something like that. It's the new Mad Max movie. And uh, 27 years after writing that. And 
I can tell you it's extremely well written, and I'm now realizing I manage bunkers in the military. That's what Matt Stein and I did for years. We do these urban survival skill workshops, and I write it in that area also. And I'm I'm not a prepper. I'm a Dr. Pepper. <laughs> Just kidding. I, what I am is a high survival coefficient. And knowing how to do things, I just, this, year, this uh, couple days ago, filmed what's in my go back. That's a book I have on the internet called uh, Can You Live Off the Grid for 30 Days? And uh, it's got seven chapters. Uh, entertainment is one of them, just like food, water, and others. And then there's a go back. What do you carry? If you had to go out that door quick. You couldn't grab things in a hurry to survive. What would you grab? And uh, my, I, I sell each little piece that I have in this little go back. You know what I have for pain? I have an eagle bone whistle that will. And I've done everything in my life trying to get to this moment where I can leave something so that maybe your daughter can survive. You and I are too old, anxious. Well, it's all right. Sure. Look, you, you've left an incredible library of information, uh, which is uh, difficult for some people to decipher <laughs> or to begin to introduce themselves to. But uh, what would you suggest if somebody is coming along and, and discovering uh, RichardAllenMiller.com for the first time? Where would you suggest they start? Most of them start with a five book series on the power tools, the non local mind. Five books to discount it if you buy all five of the books. And it is the protocols I train Navy SEALs on, and then how to use them for yourself. And uh, it's a powerful series. The new one will be how to get out of jail. Uh, I don't know. I, you know, everybody's different. A lot of people said I were the modern alchemists. That's a modern. book I took, a 14th century Christian mystic, and I did a translation of old German into English. Uh, with uh, Jungian analysis, our commentary on what that meant. And the stag and the unicorn in the forest, that's the soul and spirit within that. That's a Christian concept. And uh, the mortal and mortal part of self in the forest. And uh, I, I, I know that I don't know what I'm trying to do. It's used. My gifts a dedication as a child. I'm basically like a four year old that never became seven. Now I'm over yeah. I can't believe it. Oh my teeth are falling out. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like something out of what? Me worry? <laughs> uh, you've got a and, you got yeah. a lot more of your teeth than I do, I'll tell you that. And uh, again, <laughs> Richard really, Richard Allen Miller dot com. It doesn't sound like it, but believe me, I'm missing a whole lot more than you are. Richard Allen Miller dot com, that's where you go. And yeah, the power tools. Now I had the workbook, I had the uh I, I had a few of these things a few years ago, and uh I would highly recommend it as well because like you said, these are tools that would allow you to uh take better agency over yourself, but there's a whole lot there. I mean, you can go into sex magic, you can go into mushrooms, you can go into, uh, you know, various things, urban survival, as you mentioned, uh, a, a wide variety of topics that are uniquely covered in by Dr. Richard Allen Miller. So that's uh, that's where we're going to leave you guys for tonight. And who knows, maybe we'll have another conversation soon, because uh, it, it is endless what I could talk to this man about. As a matter of fact, I'd love to know how it is you keep a wormhole uh, you know, uh, uh, actually steady. You know, how, how do you keep it from collapsing, actually, is my question. When it comes to wormholes, and maybe Doc, <laughs> Dr. Miller can answer that one for me because, uh, well, there we go, a conversation for another day, perhaps. Maybe we talk more about Mars. Why? why let me ask you this last thing before we go. Why is Mars so significant? And why is it that it's the focus, like, you know, people are talking about it and, uh, you know, e even in the conventional sense, right? They want to take a rocket to Mars. Let's see, can we colonize it, this and that? I think it would be a bad idea, but, you know, because we can't seem to manage this this living uh, planet already. Mars, right yeah. now, at this moment, has physically more water than Earth does. The smaller planets. And most of Earth's water is underground. Mars has more water. 
that was the that was the Mars Four expedition when they went by to measure the water. That's where Earth started. That's what colonized Earth. Showed us all. Thanks to be so those stories in the green tablets, they might not be exactly right, but they're also not exactly wrong. Am I right? Well, who knows? Uh, you know, Hermes, etc. all of these individuals were like I am. They were they see something most people didn't, and then tried to add that into the picture. There you go. Anyway, and we'll let that seep into your culture. Dr. Richard Allen Miller, and that's richardallenmiller.com. I'll have the link in the description to this podcast, etc. And uh, we'll put it out there for you guys. Hopefully, nice. you gained a great deal Good. out of it. Thank, Thank you, sir. Revelation through conversation. Go ahead, caller. Yeah, I'm interested in the truth about the JFA assassination. Right. Well, what do you want to know? Judy Baker's wild claim, Oswald girlfriend, he knew Ruby and Barry, cancer weapons. Really? I imagine I could claim I have four wheels. It doesn't make me a wagon, but okay. Oswald was on the kill team and trying to prevent the murder of John Kennedy. Come on now. Has a real effort on the JFA assassination built into her claim? Go to Amazon.com. Enter Judith Baker in her own words. You'll get the results for a digital copy of a book where Walt Brown utilizes her own words and the known evidence in the case to get at, well, <laughs> a different perspective, let's say. You can get Judith Barry Baker in her own words from the author himself, signed if you request it, by contacting Dr. Brown at K-I-A-S-J-F-K at AOL.com. It's a fun book and it actually dissects the many, many fantastic claims. Judith Barry Baker in her own words. Thank you for all the great information. <laughs> Ocelli.com. The Ocelli.com radio network. In denial, the secret wars with airstrikes and tanks by Larry Hancock. Secret wars became a staple of U.S. covert operations and are still happening today. Larry Hancock's book, In Denial, rips the cover off many of them. Using new files, it exposes things about the Bay of Pigs that no one has ever written about before. It shows why it really failed and why the United States did not learn from it. It also shows why other countries today are doing secret operations with more success. This is the book that puts what some want to deny into the light. In Denial, Secret Wars with Airstrikes and Tanks. Larry Hancock. For more information, go to Larry-Hancock.com. Pick up your copy of In Denial at Amazon.com in digital or physical form. The War State by Michael Swanson explains the great national transformation that took place and put the Kennedy presidency in the context of the times and reveals never-before-published information about the Cuban Missile Crisis. President Kennedy would not have been assassinated if he had been president 200 years ago. His assassination took place in the context of the Cold War and the rise of the national security state. Before World War II, the United States was a continental republic. In the decade that followed, it became an imperial superpower. Generals such as Curtis LeMay not only wanted to invade Cuba, but knew that there were short-range missiles on the island armed with nuclear warheads that they could not destroy because they were on mobile launchers. Their invasion could have led to a third world war, and they wanted to go to war anyway. The War State by Michael Swanson reveals why and will show you what President Kennedy was up against. For more information, thewarstate.com. 
The views expressed by callers, co hosts, or anyone else who happens to get on the air at Ocelli.com do not necessarily reflect the views of Ocelli.com or Chuck Ocelli. And we are not responsible for any stupidity which might ensue. Thank you. Do you like history? Real history that you were never taught in schools? Why? The Vietnam War, nuclear bombs, and nation building in Southeast Asia by author Mike Swanson with new documentation never seen before that'll open your eyes to events that led up to this. Why? The Vietnam War, nuclear bombs and nation building in Southeast Asia, 1945 through 1961. Get your copy today at Amazon.com. Why? The Vietnam War by author Mike Swanson. This is James Corbett of CorbettReport.com and you're listening to the Ocelli Effect at Ocelli.com. Nuclear Holocaust. You know what uranium is, right? This thing called nuclear weapons and other things, like lots of, you know what uranium is, right? Bad things. Things are done with uranium, including some bad things. Nuclear holocaust. You know what uranium is, right? I've been brief. Nuclear holocaust. Nuclear holocaust. You know what uranium is, right? This thing called nuclear weapons and other things, like lots of, you know what uranium is, right? Bad things. Things are done with uranium, including some bad things. Nuclear holocaust. Nuclear holocaust. Nuclear holocaust. Nuclear holocaust. Nuclear holocaust. Nuclear holocaust. Let them know. Let them know. Let them know. Got to let them know. I'm bringing all shock like a tear rock, sipping bell out at the drag show. I'm bringing all shock like a tear rock, sipping bell light at the drag show. Homonious method, the world's worst professional provocateur. Hit them like it's 2000 something and Beck is back on tour. You never really wanted me anyway. Alcohol turns me into your enemy. I'm Yosemite Sam with some Hennessy. I used to think that bottle was the remedy. Picked it up once or twice after I let it go, but finally had to let it be. I used to roll with a fat bitch. She would give me a left tip for the 